Hey there friends, Martin here, and today let's have a look at a simple geometry node technique for your Blender environment. In the latest added chapter of my environment course, I mentioned a technique that allows you to use geometry nodes to create a seamless fence that you can then position along a curve and make scattered assets smaller in its proximity. I just teased it as a possible usage of geometry nodes, but I never actually showed this technique in the chapter, which is something you should never do in this tutorial business. Uh, therefore, I decided to correct this mistake by making a tutorial available for everyone on our YouTube channel. So this is what you'll learn to make. Before we jump into the more detailed workflow, let's have a look at a brief one minute description for people who already know what they're doing. I chose to first make a curve and I shrink wrap the curve onto a terrain plane with these settings. Then I created a new GeoNode network on it. I have scattered my fence pieces onto instance on points node, checking all these checkers. For a proper rotation of each of the pieces, I have sampled the curve data, translating the tangent rotation into vector using this align Euler to vector node, plugging the tangent to vector values and sourcing the curves vector using spline parameter node. In the advanced part of the workflow, I have joined the terrain into the network and distributed first points and second assets onto these points. To make the assets smaller, the closer they get to the fence, I have converted my original fence curve to mesh and I used it in a proximity node. I sourced position for each of the points with this node and then combined the resulting value back together into vector using combine XYZ. I replaced the proxy cube for grass and with some extra math nodes, I was able to play with the scale achieving what I set out to do. And now for a more step-by-step -step version of the tutorial. So what do you need to make a fence like this? Well, first of all, a fence. This can be anything really. You can search for one at Planswap, for example. Here's a good one. And this one too. Or you can just make a cube, then another cube, and another and a few more, and join it all together and this is important, uh, place the origin here at the vertical pole. Also important, they should be at least a little bit straight on the x-axis here. So they align properly once you start multiplying them in geometry nodes. Make a few variations of this and you have a nice fence collection. Uh, well, now you have a nice fence collection after you've placed it in one. In my case, it was a model from Megascans that I've used. I edited five slide variations of it, rotating the vertical poles, even getting rid of one in one of the variations. Making the fence assets isn't really what's important here though, and this could work for anything really. It's the process what it's all about. So once you're done with the preparation of your assets, next step would be to create a terrain. All I've done was loading up this large terrain preset from ANT Landscape, squashing it a little bit on Z and then scaling it up so that it's about 200 meters on X and Y. Then I applied its scale. Next up, let's make the curve that we'll distribute our fans onto. Now I've tried several solutions for this and how to wrap the curve around our terrain here uh, to copy the elevation. In the end though, the most useful to me appeared to be using this NURBS path curve uh, because it shows the direction of the curve and it works better with the rotation of the various points. And then second step, instead of doing the shrink wrap operation with geometry nodes, I rather just used a shrink wrap modifier directly onto this curve because it allows me to directly adjust this curve's shape in the viewport later, which is the goal in this case. Uh, just set it to a nearest vertex and use the landscape as your target. If your assets do not align perfectly to the terrain, you can always try subdividing this NURBS a little bit more. In fact, do subdivide it at least twice. And one more very important thing, uh, do activate this apply on spline checker so that your geometry nodes later actually source the curve's deformed data. The shrink wrap will get a little bit worse with this operation, uh, but usually you can just push it up a little bit and it should work fine like this. Next up, let's go ahead and distribute these fence pieces. And by the way, it's always better if you place them at the origin of your scene, like this. First thing you do, select the NURBS path and open up a geometry nodes menu. Then create a new geometry nodes network and call it fence. 
You can see as usual with GeoNodes, we have a group input, which in our case is the curve, and group output, which will gather all the changes we'll do once we're done with the Geometry Nodes network. And now let's start adding some nodes. The very first thing we want to do is to distribute the fence pieces onto our path. Let's start by using the instances, instance on points node. The curve disappears, but that's just because we haven't plugged anything into this instances socket yet, which is where you put whatever you want to scatter onto your geometry. In our case, let's just grab the whole fence group and drag it in like this. Uh, first things first, don't forget to check the separate children, which separates the individual fence pieces inside the collection. And then pick instance, which instances the pieces instead of duplicating them. And also reset the children to make sure it does not take into account the translation or rotation of the individual fence pieces. In my case, I've applied all of it, but you usually want this checked just to make sure. So probably get used to it. So the fence appeared, but the size, I'm not too sure about it. Let's change it right off the bat by playing with this number here. But hey, since we're using nodes, let's be more clever about this. We'll be using the same values for all three of these axes. So we just need a single common value for this. Uh, well, what do you know? We have a value node here. Uh, just plug it into the vector scale socket. And now we can play with the scale by just dragging this slider. You can also name it scale in here and give it a, for example, blue color. All right, so now if we edit the terrain or the curve in edit mode, the fence sort of reacts, but it's far from what we want. Uh, we want it to rotate based on the normals of the curve, meaning the rotation of any given point on this NURBS path. And for that, we need to source that information from our curve. Well, again, in this curve folder, there is an ingenious node called sampler curve. It samples some data from it, like normal, position and more, giving us options to plug it somewhere else. Uh, so let's use it. And in this case, we'll be using the tangent rotation uh, in the rotation of our instances. So far, though, it's not working too well. That's because this tangent information about the alignment of the curve's points does not translate too well directly to rotation vector, which we have here. We need something to translate the information better. And that something is a node called align Euler to vector. Euler basically defines how to rotate an object by rotating it first in Z, then in Y, and then in X axis. And this node allows you to just connect the source tangent into the actual vector rotation of the objects we are placing on the curve. In short, you seriously need it. So plug the tangent into vector and the resulting rotation into the rotation of the instance on points node. You can leave the settings as they are, but here in the sampler curve node, choose this vector method. And to improve the results, we can plug a new node into this vector socket. The vector basically tells the sampler curve node where on the curve we are located. So value of zero is a start of the curve and value of one is the end. We, however, want a different tangent rotation for each part of the curve where we place the fence. So to do that, at this spline parameter node, uh, which takes information from the spline rotation. That's why we activated it in the modifier previously. And now the rotation of the fence is almost perfect. To improve this, let's say you wanted to have a better control over how many instances of the fence there are on the curve. Uh, for that, you need to change the number of points or vertices on the curve. And that we can do by adding this resample node to this geometry output. It basically changes the amount of points on your curve. And don't forget to plug it both into the instance on point socket and the curve socket of the sampler curve to use the same data for the instancing and the rotation. Now we can play with this number. I ended up with 20. And as a matter of fact, you can duplicate the scale node we created, rename it count, make it different color like yellow. And there we go. We have two nice controllers right here. Or even better, you can actually go to the group input here. And in this menu accessed in the shelf, uh, you can add a new input to it. Let's choose this integer option, which basically just gives you whole numbers uh, without decimals. And now you can name these two values count 
and scale. With that, plug them into the count and scale sockets of our nodes and set the values again. By the way, it's just a coincidence, both my values ended up to be 20 here. Yours will very much depend on the size of your assets and the terrain. And here we are, a geometry node network that we can control directly from the modifier panel. How cool is that? Now that the main part of the tutorial is over, we can do something more advanced. Let's say for people a bit more adept at this geometry node stuff. In our case, I'm going to show you how would you go about scattering grass elements on the plane and then making it grow smaller the closer it gets to the fence. So first we actually take our landscape we've created, drag it inside the fence geometry node network and use join geometry node to merge it with our fence. If at this point it is positioned differently than in your scene, once you hide the original terrain, just set this parameter to relative and it will set things right. You can even add a material on it with set material node. I have this ground material already prepared in the scene, just a BSDF shader with some CC0 textures from Ambient CG. By the way, if at this point no texture appears on your terrain, it might be because on the ANT landscape there are no UVs, so definitely unwrap it and all should be fine. Next up, let's gather some objects on the ground all around the fence. For now, let's just add a simple cube, bring it here and check this S instance checker to be able to have instance duplicates of it, uh, not unique ones. That would take up a lot of performance, especially for more detailed assets than a cube. All right, next up, we need to scatter some points on our ground geometry to be able to put the cubes on. Let me make a little bit of space here. Bring in this distribute points on faces node and connect this last green output of our ground network into the mesh socket here and then join geometry. Immediately what you can do is increase the density to cover the ground more with these points. And now we want to try adding our asset onto these points. Uh, in our case it's the cube. So let's add this instances on points node and plug it here. Plug the cube into the instance socket and you can check pick instance. All right, that worked, but the cubes are a bit too large. So let's change the scale in here. What we set out to do was in fact to have a dynamic scale of these assets that grow smaller the closer it gets to the fence. So let's do just that. We shall make a whole new network in here, sourcing the proximity of the curve on which we place the fence. So naturally, let's search for a node called proximity. Uh, geometry proximity in this case. Connect our group input, which is the curve geometry, into the target, but this will only work under two conditions. First, since curves are actually not taken into consideration of this target socket, we first need to bring in curve to mesh converter. Second, you need to switch to points here instead of faces. This way, each vertex of the curve will serve as an indicator where the scattered assets should clear off. Next, with this data, we will convert them into a distance value using vector math node. Set it to distance and as you can see, the purple vector data here is converted into a gray socket, containing a single value based on the distance from the fence. However, for it to source every single point of the curve individually, we need one more node and this is position node plugged into the distance vector. And this way it measures distance from each individual point on the curve, giving a value for it. All that's left is to translate this information back into vector data with combine XYZ node. So all three inputs plug in here. And here we again have this purple output. It's a bit of a workaround, but necessary for first sourcing the data, uh, manipulating with them, and then being able to plug it in here into the purple scale socket of the instance on points node. And it works, kinda. Uh, clearly, these are too huge, but we can add a few math nodes in here to mess around with this. To control the scale of the cubes, you could try adding multiply math node and just lower the scale.
But there is actually an even handier method for this, uh, the multiply add. It allows you to make the resulting asset smaller, but then also add to it. And that's exactly what I want now. And then to add a bit of randomness to the assets, just add another math node, set it to multiply and quickly add a new node called random value, which does what it says. Just plug the distance into the first socket of the multiply node and the randomness into the second socket. And now you can set the smallest and largest value for the assets. The network will then randomly pick between these two. And that's it. This looks like the result we want. Let's test it if editing of the curve has effect on the graphs, and it does. Of course, you can adjust the values some more. But the scale will change anyway if you add your custom assets to it. So I have this grass here, drag it in as a whole collection, check uh, separate children and reset children, and then plug it into the instances socket. And once I add it in, we need to re-edit these multiply, add and random values again. And that's it. This looks like the result we want. And just like that, it works even when you start editing the fence shape or the terrain shape. Mission accomplished, I'd say. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this brief expedition into the Geometry Nodes territory of Blender 3.0. Let me know in the comments if you found it useful and remember, there is much more waiting for you in the Master 3D Environment course at CG Boost, from using ANT landscape, satellite data, uh, displacing with shader nodes or displace modifier, also sculpting, and that's just scratching the surface. With that though, let me end this video and wish you all the best. Uh, stay safe my friends, and stay creative. Martin out.